everybody. Welcome to Quilt Tribe in May. We have five really good blocks to do tonight. I think you're going to like them. And we're going to get started. So you guys have your patterns out, right? Yeah. So we're just going to run from the beginning to the end. I'm not going to skip around on you. The first one that we're going to do is called Indian Head. And on the way home from work to my house, there's one of those coin places that you, for coin collectors. It's like new magic something, I don't know, I can't pronounce it. But anyway, I walked in and I picked up this little Indian head penny. Isn't it cute? It's from 1903. Yeah, cool. yeah but they now cost a dollar. <laughs> they don't cost a penny anymore, they cost a dollar. And this was like a sub, you know, it wasn't their top of the line, but it did get my point across. But it's kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah. Remember when we used to find these in our, um, in the coins? I remember finding them. Yeah. We're aging ourselves. Well, I'm aging myself anyway, but I think it's pretty fun. So here's the block, and it's just like a churn dash block. It's a little sassy because these are not all the same size. I just kind of changed it up a little bit. And um, very simple and fun to make. So I'll just go through. I'm going to put it up on the wall, and then I'll go through the steps with you, okay? So here's our first one. Nice and cheery, huh? I'm liking these colors. Okay, so we're going to make our peace triangle squares, and just to remind you, I'm doing the 12-inch blocks, so I'm going to be using those charts. And to make these um, ones, I'm starting out with a 6 by 12-inch piece of both background and my medium fabric, medium or dark, whichever you want to call it. Um, you're always going to start by drawing a line halfway between. So if this is six inches high, this line will be six inches across because you want to make a perfect square. And then you'll go ahead and draw one diagonal line in each square. And I, I like to sew starting in the inside. So like here and then leave my needle down, pivot, go down around the other side, lift my presser foot and I'll go to the outside, across and back down. And I, I think it keeps it a lot flatter. If it does kind of tend to, you know, get a little poofy or something, just stick the iron to it and that will set those seams in there for you. Okay, so I'm going to square mine up to five and a half. And by doing that, you're going to have a total of four of them. So that's, that's good, right? Gets it done. Now to do our little side pieces, I went ahead and just sewed a background strip to a dark strip in one long seam and I press it towards the dark. And then I'll go and I'm gonna cut it into four equal pieces. And in my case, I'm gonna cut it up to two and a half inches wide. So by doing this, you're gonna get really good clean pieces with not, you know, they're not gonna be, you know, sometimes if you just sew this rectangle to the square, they might be off a little bit. This will keep them all nice and even. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the remainder of those. And this is a good block to start on because it'll get your confidence up. And then you'll be all excited that you've started this process, right? <laughs> okay, so let's lay it out and see what it looks like. I was going to do this quilt in all solids, but I like a little bit of the print in there as well. I think it just kind of steps it up a bit. Okay. Wondering if I lost my center. I lost my center this morning. Doesn't get much easier than this, does it? And there you go. Then you have one just right in the middle. Okay? Now to sew the block together, I like to sew the rows. And you just take the, the middle column, flip it right sides together to the one on the left, and you're going to assembly line sew. And then you'll just open it up and then do the same thing with the final row. So when you get the rows together, I make it all nice and neat, and then I make a mess. It's really fun. <coughs> okay, so here are my rows. So they look good. And I press everything towards my lattice. I'm calling the blue and the white my lattice. And this is also gets pressed towards the lattice. So you can see when I'm going to go, I'll turn it to the way I'm going to sew it. When I'm going to sew these things together, all these seams will lock for you. And you, you'll have really good match points. So I think you'll be good on that. All right, is there any questions on that? Yes. 
It's pretty easy. And you get a good sense of accomplishment right from the get-go of this process. You know, sometimes people tell me that they have trouble, you know, starting to do it. And if you're, like, pinched for time, it's really a good idea. I would take my book, like this is the way I do it. I take my book, and then I'll pick my fabrics, and I'll put them in that page of that pattern. Okay, May that might be the only thing I get done that night. And then I'll go back maybe another night, and I'll cut all my pieces. And then finally, when you have time, you can just go sew them. And it's really kind of it's a relaxing way to do it. I highly recommend it. Okay. So that's Indian head. Beep. Okay, the next one we're going to do is called tomahawk. And I don't have a tomahawk for you. <laughs> I would have tried to find one, but I, I couldn't find one. But this is kind of interesting, and I wanted to try using a stripe just to see, you know, how it played with the block. And I think it's kind of it's kind of fun, yeah. and with a really fun fussy cut. It looks like a bolt Indian Yeah. This fabric, um, we had a bolt of it this morning, and before I got done teaching, the bolt was gone. People were calling in for that fabric. Oh. Okay, so there's that. Um, I'm just going to review about doing a fussy cut. Here's the, the overall fabric. And you can see it kind of looks like Swiss cheese. <laughs> and I cut one today just to show you what it looks like if you just randomly cut it. Can you see how that doesn't really do anything for you? But look how much nicer that looks than just that, that random one. So sometimes the fabric really looks better when you fussy cut it. Okay, the one I'm going to try today is a lighter one. So let's go down. See this one right here? Let's try and see what that's going to look like. Okay, so I put my four and a half inch fussy cut ruler right on top. Um, some of you, if you're doing the 9 or the 6 inch, of course it's going to be a smaller, but it tells you in the pattern what size you need to cut. And I like to use this pattern to kind of determine where I'm going to place it. Like this is definitely the middle, right? And there's eight little points that come out. So when I have my X, I can just put that right on top like that. Can you see? And these are more or less in the corners. So when I go to cut, I'm just going to go up the side and across. And then if you had a rotating mat, which we should be getting those in any day now, I think, because I looked again today. So I just turn the whole thing. You want to avoid going toward yourself, because that's when you can accidentally cut. No cutting. OK, so that's kind of a fun fussy cut, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Very nice fussy cut. Okay, so these are the two that I would choose out of that piece of fabric. And we'll decide which one we're going to use. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, it's the exact same thing we did with the other block. We're going to start with two rectangles, one of your dark and one of your background, or this could be a medium, medium or dark, whatever you choose. Again, you're going to draw a line to create two equal squares, and so one quarter inch from both sides. Again, starting in the middle and then going around and doing the outside edge. So when that's done, we have four of these really cute little peace triangle squares. All exactly the same size, which is a nice thing, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so the stripe, um, when I went and cut the stripe, see this already has a seam in it. But when I initially cut, I don't know if you can really see, I think you can. When I cut it, I, made, I measured this width, and I know it was supposed to be two and a half inches. So what's halfway between that would be one and a quarter, right? So I would put one and a quarter on my ruler right down the middle of that darkest stripe, and then I cut here, and then I turned around and cut the other side. So I can keep my focal point directly there. So I sewed it to my background, and then I pressed it towards the stripe. Okay? And... Next thing I'm going to do, and I need to cut four pieces, and this time they're, for my 12 inch blocks, they're going to be four and a half. So I'm just going to cut four of those. So last week I went to Albuquerque, and um, these colors really remind me a lot of the Southwest. This is pretty good. 
Yes, I did. I was home one day and my dad's best friend passed away. So I went to go speak. You might remember him, all right, as Ken Thompson. Um, I went to go speak on behalf of my side of the family. I really wasn't expecting to go to Albuquerque after Paducah, but <laughs> anyway, okay, so there's my fussy cut. And then here are the corners, like this. Okay, another thing you can do if you just want to try something else, you could put your stripes next to your center fussy cut, and this gives you a whole different look. So whichever way your fabrics speak to you, that kind of gives a whole different thing, doesn't it? Kind of looks like there's a box behind. You know what I mean? Yeah. So however you want to do it. And then, again, I'm just going to sew it exactly the same way as I showed you before in the last block. Whichever way you decide to put your stripes on the outside or the inside, make sure you're consistent and don't sew three one way and one the other way. I tried that. It didn't work. <laughs> so anyway, so there you go. There's your block. Okay, so now you're ready for the so a little challenging block. I know you are, the papoose. Yeah, I really like this block. And this one has a, um, it's a real traditional block actually, and it's, one of its names is windmill. And you can kind of see how it would turn around like a windmill. In fact, there's a lot of blocks named windmill, but this is just one of the variations of windmill. So let's kind of see what we have in this block. We have a square and a square is gonna be our center which means the square is just like at a 45 degree angle from the blue. And then we have four peace triangle squares and we have four flying geese, okay? So we're gonna make all those little components individually and then we'll go sew them together. All right, so we'll start off with our peace triangle squares. It's getting smaller because our peace triangle squares are getting smaller. Same thing, you're going to be experts at this by the end. Okay, and cut them apart and square them up. They're going to look like that. Confident, I can tell you're confident on that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is the flying geese. And when I did this, I got a little um, rambunctious and I just cut them all in half. But here's how you start, and then we'll continue on. And you have instructions on how to do your flying geese. So I feel confident about that. So here's our little flying geese patches. So those are good and ready to go. And then we're going to do our square and a square. So the fabric that I chose to go around, it's pretty dark fabric. And I went and looked and I found this really nice um, Bowen pencil, marking pencil. And what's really fun about it, it has, this is my white that I used on my dark, but you turn it and then this is like a regular lead pencil. And then you turn it and it's red. So it's magic. it's magic. It's really a cool pencil. And it also has a little eraser at the end, which works even on fabric. So anyway, these are good and we have these. So you could have one of your very own. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I put the mark squares on two opposite corners of my center square. And I have drawn my line and I sew actually like just one thread's width to the right of that line. So when the fabric is folded back, this corner goes all the way out to the thing. And you want to check and make sure you have a really good point there because once you trim off this excess fabric, you have nothing to compare to if it's going to work or not. So I always check. I'm very consistent with that because I have chosen to ignore that step and been burned every time. So make sure you do that. And once you got those on, you're going to add on your remaining two squares and with the lines on them, do the exact same thing, check, and trim off the excess. So there's your center. Um, a little hint what you can do. You know how sometimes when you do these, even though no matter how careful you are, they get like a little kind of funny? You can take a flying geese ruler. Um, you measure this width, and so this is a six and a half inch square. And I know that this is a finished three by six inch, so the width of this acrylic is six and a half because it's unfinished at that point. And you can put the line of the flying geese ruler 
right on your seam line and then trim off any other sort of bumps. So it's a really good guide that you can use. That's your, that's your trick of the night, wow. right? So it works really well because sometimes you get a little bump and then you kind of go, oh, where do I cut it? But this gives you a guideline with that. So I recommend to do that. Okay, so we have a good center. And then we're going to go back to these flying geese and peace triangle squares. And I'm going to line them up with my geese on my left side and my peace triangle squares on the right. And you're just going to flip that right sides together and you're going to sew down. Let's see where we are in our pattern. We are on page 12. Okay? So just take a good glance and make sure you have them, you know, the geese going this way, peace triangle square. It's very easy to kind of turn them around. But once you get that established, then you're going to go ahead and make four of them exactly the same. Okay? And we're going to do a bit of partial seaming. And I just like to lay everything out so I can get kind of a visual where I'm going. And a good thing to remember is this peace triangle square is the same color as that square in a square. So you know that you're going to having these two fabrics together. Okay? So you don't want to sew like this. That's not really what we're looking for, right? So just compare back to the picture. Okay? And I'm going to sew a little bit for you. Okay. I'm still using my little pouch. I don't know if you guys remember this pouch from last time that Orion gave me. I love it. And it works really good. And today when I went to use it, it had gotten kind of linty, dusty linty. So I just took some soapy water and washed it all off and it sticks great. So it just sticks to the end of the table and then you can just put all your things in there and grab them when you need them. And I believe we have those too. Okay, so I'm just going to take the one on the right and just flip it right sides together and I'm only going to sew halfway down. Okay? And what is wrong with that? I had it upside down because I was playing with it. Okay, I went blue next to blue. Good catch, wasn't it? I don't like to unsew. Like if I'm sewing and then I decide I really don't like that color, I just almost want to start over. <laughs> But that's kind of a waste of fabric, huh? Okay, so I'm just going to sew halfway. And I like to sew on this first one. Since there's this seam here, I sew past where that seam is. I don't stop right on that seam because it'll be hard to start again right there. Okay, so then when I open this up and turn this, you can see that now I can just sew from here to here. Okay, I don't have to do it. That's the only partial seam that I need to do. So I'm going to flip that right sides together and line up the top. Put my little jumper back in. And if you have like an automatic pivot foot, which means every time you stop your machine, your foot goes up, this is a great time to use that feature. Okay, I get it started. And then I'm going to take both ends and line them up. Okay, and what this is going to do, this is going to make sure that I have the fabric meeting really well at the other end. Sometimes when you're sewing, the fabric underneath, since it's right next to the feed dogs, it'll actually, you'll use up the bottom fabric faster than you will the top, and you're going to have more top fa fabric left. So that's why I like just to hold it together there. Okay, there's quite a bump when you get to the top of that goose. So try and get a good running start before you get there. <laughs> you don't want to stop right before it. It could be disastrous. Okay. So this is all sewn on. Okay. So we got that. That looks good. Okay. I want to match the point right there in the corner. And then you're aiming to get this seam line right at the corner of that square and a square. Okay. We're going to turn it one more time. Okay, look at it. Another good thing to remember when you're putting these on, these geese patches are pointing towards the middle of your block. So you're going to see the majority of the, like in my case, green on the outside. Any little trick to make sure you're sewing in the right order helps, right? Use them all. 
Okay, again, I'm gonna line up the other end. Get a good running start. Oh, see how much better that was? There you go. Another trick is what I did today as I changed the needle. <laughs> I don't know the last time it was changed, but I have a feeling it's probably been a while. Okay, so we got that. And one more turn. Looking good, huh? We're going to have four of these quilts when we get done because I always do my blocks in sets of four. That's good news, huh, Ryan? We are always have like one quilt or something and everybody needs it at the same time. Okay. Gee, I stopped. Whoa. That didn't sound right, did it? It could have gone out of the looper just to torment me. Okay, I'm gonna do a rethread because that just did not sound right. And whenever you, this is an opportunity about rethreading your machine. Whenever you do a rethread, make sure you do the top and the bottom. Nope, it did not break. It sounded like it did, but it appears to be intact. <laughs> So Ryan, last month when we talked, it was right before Easter. How did your girls like Easter this year? They loved it. We went to um, Pringle Care Park, and it wasn't as many eggs as I had said, but yeah. it was big. Yeah. I don't know if, you got, if anybody can hear me from the, from the mic, but um, yeah, we, uh, we did eggs, and then we hung out with our neighbors, and we went to dinner there, or lunch. It was, it was pretty cool. Yeah. I had a good time too. I have two little grand nephews and we probably hid the same eggs 25, 30 <laughs> times. <laughs> They're like one in three. Hey, it works. It was a new story every day, right? So next year, I should be doing my own Easter egg hunts. Sadie is due in three weeks. Ooh. I know, isn't that fun? The car seat went in yesterday in the car. The bag's packed, and I'm going, I'm going over to get a lesson on Saturday on what I'm supposed to do with the baby. Oops, still didn't sound right. Nope. What did I just tell you to do? Just do the top and the bottom, right? Did I do the bottom? No. So I'll, um, I'll tell you about my first experience with my, my daughter. So we, um, we did not know how to strap her in, so they supposedly are supposed to follow you out to your car and see if you can strap your child into the car seat. But we didn't know how to do it, so we put her legs through the little thing and she said, that's right. <laughs> and we brought her home and she was born in October and October 23rd, December 26th, um, I went to a friend's house who had a baby and my wife put our kid and our daughter in the car seat, and I would have done the same, the same way. And she's like, that's not how you do it. You have been doing it wrong for <laughs> all that time. Days. <laughs> well, I'm thinking that um, Dylan's going to have it right because he checks car seats when he pulls people over. Oh. I think they're trained in car seat safety or something. It's part of the academy training. You should be good. I know. <laughs> yeah, it should be fun. Okay, so we got that machine working again. Okay, so I just have this little seam left, right? So I'm just going to put it right sides together and I'll start just about two stitches above where I ended and complete that last seam. Yes, I'm excited. The pink quilt is done. I'm learning to love pink. <laughs> Except I did buy the baby, having Dylan, um, and not having the girl, I kind of been more doing boy stuff. So I bought the baby about all the different kinds of poop animals have, which I don't know how Kelly's gonna like it, but I think Dylan will think it's really cool. <laughs> I know, that was duress too. But it seems to be easier this time around. 
Maybe because I'm getting a granddaughter out of it. I don't know. It's a secret. They said they wouldn't tell me. Okay, there's my block. What do you think? It's pretty, huh? Even after our little machine failure. Okay, so it's, it's real simple to do. I mean, I think the illustrations are really good in the pattern for you. All right, that's it for papoose. Kind of goes with the baby theme. Okay, this is called village. And this is a lesson in fussy cutting and getting your fussy cuts to go the right way. So isn't this little bunny cute? Yeah. I think he's so cute. And these colors, this probably won't go in that quilt, but I like the fussy <laughs> cuts of um, the bunnies, so they seem to work good. So when you're looking for fussy cut fabric, it's always really nice if you find fabric that's not really wasteful. You know what I mean, how you have a hole here and a hole there? And this one worked out really well because I could get one, two, three, four bunnies in a row. And then this little bunny, unfortunately, was wasted. And then, so it was really good use of bunny fabric. This morning on the way to work, I almost ran over a three-legged bunny that ran in front of me. I'm going, what's wrong with that bunny? <laughs> it only had three legs. But I stopped. So anyway, just when you look at fabric like that. So I went ahead and cut my four bunnies. And the trick about keeping them straight is every single one is sewn a little bit differently. So I like to lay them all out. Get back over there, bunny. So let's go to page, page 15. Okay. Now, in the upper left hand, you're going to have a red short strip on the, all the way to the left. But down on the other one, on the lower right, it's going to be on the right side. Okay? And then for the long strip, it's going to be on the top of that one, but it'll be on the bottom of that one. Okay? I'm just following those little red illustrations on page 15. Okay, so that takes care of my red. And then for my green, it's going to be at the bottom of this one, but at the top of that one. And then for my little strips, it's going to be to the right of that, but am I doing this right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's like that. No, it's not right. OK, what's wrong with it? It's this one's here and this one's here. OK, that's what I did. That was a test, you guys. OK, there you go. That looks right. And when I go to sew it together, I sew this one and put it back there. I'll sew this one and put it back there. Don't try an assembly line sew, because it's really easy to switch them back and forth. So this looks like a really simple block, and it is really simple. But you just got to pay attention on if you're doing top or bottom or left or right. So I'll lay them out with them sewn. OK. So here it looks. Isn't he cute? I like the eyelashes on this guy. I think Ty was using this bunny, too. He was? Yeah. It is so, so cute. It's from a fabric company called Art Gallery. They're out of South America. And they're kind of new up and coming, but their fabrics have been very popular. It's nice quality fabric as well. So just remember that two of them are next to each other, but the other color that you choose are going to be on opposite ends. That's another good kind of key reference point you got there. OK? And then when it's sewn together, I, do, I did swirl the middle seam. You know, we've done that on several different blocks. And it tells you in there to do that. But let's say you have fabrics that aren't really fussy cut. It's just like an overall print that you might want to use. The good thing about that is they all get sewn the straight way. See, this is the short side, and this is the long. And it's going to be the same way on the other color, short side and long. So you can really assembly line those. And then as you place them in your block, that's when you're going to turn it around to be, you can turn them any way you want, okay? So 
If you really want to go fast and not be fussy, you just get an overall print. Okay? So that's all there is to that block. All right. Okay, what's our last one? Quail. quail. And so although it says quail, and we do have quail in Fallbrook. It's really kind of fun. They're really cute with their little feather on top. This is a line of fabric called Chipper, and this is a little chipmunk. Yeah, it's by um, Tula Pink. <laughs> yeah, which is very appropriate. It's pink. Um, and it's done very similar to uh, Papoose, to this one right here. And I'll show you what the difference is. This. Okay, again, you're going to have a center square, but you don't have to worry about a square in a square. Um, you're going to have four piece triangle squares, and you're going to have four flying geese. Okay? So when you do, you, are, you already know about the how to make, start making them and stuff like that. So let's kind of put that aside. I'll put this up on the board. Okay. When you go to sew these two together, all your pinks or all that medium, whatever color you use, it's all going to be on one side, as opposed to the other ones had half of it, the geese down here, and then the piece triangle squares went that way. Okay. Can you see how it's really just like a line? And you're going to sew it, and you're going to press your seam towards your geese. So it's going to be pressed this way. And when you lay it out with your fussy cut center, it's the exact same thing. You're going to start with this piece triangle square touching your center. And this time, your flying geese are going to be going away from the center. Oop, short one. We'll use this. Okay? So it just kind of frames it. Can you see it? it? I mean, it looks different, but it's really when you take it apart to the different elements in it, it's really just the same. And you're going to sew it the exact same way I just showed you. You're going to do a partial seam here. Then you'll sew this seam from end to end. This is from end to end, end to end, and then complete that partial seaming. Okay? I think you'll like it. This is a really cheery block, isn't it? So, okay, well, that's it. I know you can do this. Yay! Yay, yay. And I got one of these little pin, these magnetic pin bowls today. Isn't that cute? I think Riley Blake makes them. And you just kind of throw your pin in that general direction. It don't fall out. This is a really fun thing. I know, it's cute. And they come in red and white, and then a little check, too. I saw them. I thought they were fun. <laughs>